Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're going to love today's video because we're going to talk about the Garmin R10 and whether or not it's still a good viable option to purchase in 2024 as a launch monitor. So as the PGA show is wrapping up in Orlando on the 26th of January, I was thinking about some of the new products that were coming out from various manufacturers and some of the pricing has come down more. Uh, still in the thousands, uh, unlike the Garmin R10, which is typically under $600. So one thing right off the bat that I like about the Garmin R10 is that you don't have to pay for the app and you don't have to pay for the driving ranges and you, there is no other you know, subscription to get high-end data metrics, okay? You know, like attack angle and club path, things like that. So you're going to get higher end data metrics with the Garmin R10, and I really like that a lot with no subscription. So here are all of the data metrics that you can get with the Garmin R10. With the radar metrics on the Garmin R10, you're going to get club head speed, club face angle, club path angle, angle of attack, ball speed, launch angle, launch direction, spin axis, spin rate, apex height, smash factor, which is the efficiency, carry distance, total distance, and deviation distance. Lots of things for you to help improve your golf game with the Garmin R10. Now, I've owned it for almost a year, and I've tracked well over 20,000 balls with it, so I know how reliable it is. You're gonna get an occasional disconnect, it happens, and usually there's a reason for it, and I'll talk about that later. You can use it with a net, you can use it with you know, a TV monitor, uh, and you know, screencast it to that, or however way you're gonna do it with an HDMI cable, or you can use it with a traditional, uh, you know, projector and a golf enclosure or screen that you may have DIY'd yourself. Here are some of the software that is supported in some way with the Garmin. And, and to me, this is a great feature of the Garmin is that the device has great software versatility. So you do have to pay for these things, okay? E6, very realistic golf. Uh, simulation software. If you have an iPhone or an iPad and use it with the Garmin, there is a free trial that comes. Unfortunately, it's not available for Android. The Golf Club 2019, if I was going to get another software package, I would get that. Home T Hero. Home T Hero is a subscription that you can get for like $99 a year. It is a bit cartoony, okay? So it's great though with your phone or with an iPad or to, you know, uh, stream it to a TV or run it from an HDMI cable to a TV from your iPad or whatnot. Um, I had a lot of fun with in the beginning when I was uh, hitting it into a net. Then you also have Awesome Golf. That was the second software package that I bought. And uh, that is a really good practice utility. I and mean, you can use it with your phone, you can use it with your iPad, you can use it with your enclosure. There are different uh, screen resolutions that you can use if you use it on your computer along with the companion app with the uh, awesome golf app on your phone or iPad. Next is Creative Golf. I don't have any experience with that. I do go over that in my uh, video where I talk about the software for the Garmin R10. Uh, that is also another option. And then what I use currently now is GS Pro. So GS Pro is not officially supported by Garmin, however, you can use it because GS Pro is an open API software and there is a free connector that you can download for this software that you can use to use with your Garmin and it works very, very well and it is very realistic golf simulation software. Again, I have a complete breakdown of these software options and cost and I'll put that video at the end of this one that you can watch after this. Here are some of the shots using Awesome Golf uh, with the Garmin R10 on driving ranges and in course play.
All right, and here are some shots using GS Pro with the Garmin R10 on uh, driving ranges and in course play. All right, get in the hole. Not quite. Get in there. Hopefully that holds the fairway. Come on. Stop, 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 stop. Nice shot. One thing I also wanted to mention is you don't have to use custom balls or stickers or anything like that with the Garmin R10. It does help uh, with the driver, especially though with the stickers, if you're using stickers or with RCT balls, it'll give you better accuracy on the spin. Garmin says that it's a 50% more accuracy with that type of thing like the RCT balls. Also, it is rechargeable, so it is highly portable. So if you wanna take it to the driving range, if you wanna take it on course, if you wanna use it in your garage or in your basement, you're using just you know, like a phone to track your shots or an iPad, you can do that. And then you know, also with a full-blown golf simulator system with an enclosure and all that. I've used it during three to four hour sessions and it has never even come close to running out of juice. Now, there are some deficiencies with the Garmin R10, uh, as with most launch monitors, and let me go through that. So, really these deficiencies are things that can be overcome. The graphics in the Garmin app are cartoony. Now, you do get some free driving ranges, which are pretty decent with the Garmin R10. However, again, like I said, the graphics are cartoony and their home T hero is cartoony. However, it really is kind of fun and it works really well. Now, some people experience uh, radar interference with the Garmin R10. So basically it'll shut the radar down on and off um, and it won't track your shots. So this, some of the things that can shut it down is a fan, even your projector, a heater that has an electric fan motor. This can be a problem. So there is ways to overcome that in you know, for a heater, I ended up just getting a 1K indoor kerosene heater, 22,000 B2 heater. And obviously there's no fan with that and that works really great. In the summertime, my portable AC that I use in my garage to cool my garage down does not affect the radar. Interestingly enough, I hung some curtains for my channel that I pull back so that it kind of shields the rest of my garage to just make it look better. And the radar interference issue that I had with fans in my electric heater stopped. And I just think that there's something about those curtains that block that. And I really do think that it can't be a coincidence, it's blocking it. Uh, and then I've also seen some guys on YouTube that have channels use a cage over the projector when they're having that Bluetooth interference with your Garmin. And they've made videos on how to build that very easily and cheaply to avoid that. So again, you can overcome deficiencies with the Garmin like the radar interference. You have to put your launch monitor, your Garmin, about you know six and a half, seven feet back or so. So I keep mine about seven feet, three inches back. Uh, and then my ball to the screen is about nine feet, 10 inches. And I find that's perfect for launching all of my shots and tracking all of my shots accurately. Now, with your higher end launch monitors, they're gonna set right next to where you strike the ball. So you don't need all that space behind you. You basically need three or four feet behind you at the most for your backswing. So it does make you have more space if you're going to use this launch monitor. However, most people are going to have that kind of space if you're using it in a garage or even in a basement. 
Uh, this is a big one too. It is easier to putt with higher end launch monitors. So I don't currently putt. I've seen some guys on channels show different ways that you can putt using the Garmin R10, using X-Putt is one way, and then there's another way with a camera. So you kind of have to jump through some hoops to putt with the Garmin. It is possible, but it is harder to do so. Other than that, really, you know, those are not deal breakers for me because they are all areas in which you can overcome that, okay? Especially when we're talking about the price of the Garmin R10, which ranges between $499 and $599 year round. Almost everywhere you buy it, sometimes you can get it less than that used. But I mean, it's hard to find a product that is that accurate and reliable with that many software options than the Garmin R10, which is why I still use it after almost a year. Again, it is accurate and reliable. I've been able to dial all of my clubs in for real world golf using the Garmin R10. Paying attention to the radar metrics, you can do that. The Garmin on YouTube has been compared to almost every other launch monitor side by side, tracking radar metrics with almost all of the launch monitors on YouTube. So I can tell you that compared to them with all the videos that I've watched, it is accurate. And my experience has been that it has been accurate. In the end, the software options that are available to use with the Garmin R10, the accuracy, the price, the reliability, the Garmin R10 is still a highly, highly viable option to purchase in 2024 and beyond. So I certainly hope that you enjoyed today's video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed today's content and share with your friends. There is a super thanks button with a dollar sign and a heart below the video. If you'd like to support the channel with a small donation as low as $2, please click on that and donate to the channel. I'll use all those funds to help grow the channel and only that. Also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you're notified as I release new content going forward, which I do about once a week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.